the crowd to sleep. We're looking for more in our main event. Let's talk about Lovemore Endo. He is from South Africa, fighting out of Sydney, Australia. Now, he fought a title eliminator earlier this year. There was no championship belt at stake. But then at 3 a.m., he got a call from one of the sanctioning bodies, and he was told that he is now the belt holder at 140 pounds. Lennox, you had a similar situation, not winning the belt in the ring. Does that serve as a source of motivation for Endu coming into tonight as far as that he didn't leave the ring with a belt? He got it in the middle of the night in a late-night phone call that normally brings bad news. It did bring good news to him. Well, it definitely makes you feel good because all of a sudden you're a champion. That gives you a, a, a lot more better vibe going into the ring because you have something to defend. Most boxers don't like to get it that way. They like to hear the new champion, but, you know, in this, in this case it escaped him. Uh, maybe if he wins some other titles, he's going to hear the new champion, but uh, he's definitely going in with an edge as a champion. All right, Larry, we turn our attention to Pauli Malinaji. Now, here's a guy that uh, got thumped in a chance at a title, but he gets a second title shot, and he hasn't beaten a ranked fighter yet. How does he get here? Well, Muhammad Ali would say he has the, um, the right connections and the right complexion. But maybe it's just a New York thing. With the media and the exposure, a hot young fighter may get. After all, another brash uh, boxer from Brooklyn named Zab Judah did get a shot at Cotto last week, even though he hadn't won a fight in two years. Still, to be known best as Malinaji is, for losing a brave fight. It doesn't speak a whole lot about him as a championship contender, but that's the uh, don't ask and don't tell <laughs> part of boxing. Well, we're going to find out what kind of test he can put up tonight against Endo. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for our main event. Lovemore Endo and Pauli Malinaji. Get a look at the numbers. The fighters weighed in at the official weigh-in. And Malinaji, 138 pounds. The sanctioning body has a rule in which the fighters must weigh in the next day, which was earlier today. They cannot gain more than 10 pounds. Malinaji did just that and also added another pound and a half. Endo, in this morning's weigh-in for the sanctioning body, weighed in at 146 pounds, but when he stepped on our unofficial scales tonight, he actually dropped two pounds. He'll come into the ring at about 144 pounds. For our main event, the rules with Harold Letterman. The love for Endo, Pauli Malinaji fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. The case that comes caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Bob! Here comes Pauli Malinaji, born in the United States. As a youth, he lived in Italy, estranged from his father, who was a professional soccer player. They had no relationship for about 12 years, but on the eve of Father's Day tomorrow, Pauli's father, Sebastiano, has made the trip from Italy. They repaired the relationship when the dad showed up in Liverpool for an amateur tournament and introduced himself to his son. It's been a hard road, Larry, for Pauli Malinaji. It has been, like a lot of fighters, comes from... Uh, a family situation that makes them special to have to rise above it to make something of their lives in this way. Wally Malinaji is in the ring for a closer look at the Brooklyn native. Larry, take it away. All right, Pauli Malinaji looks back at the Kodo fight as a defining fight. Why did he take it when he did? Well, in his mind, it was to show himself and others that he could gain respect, which he did from taking a beating. Now he says he wants to show that he, that fight did not ruin him for future fights like the one tonight. And the fight tonight is against Lovemore Endo. Born in South Africa, fighting out of Australia. He's been in Australia for 11 years. June the 16th is a day of mourning in South Africa. 31 years ago, there was an uprising with students. There was bloodshed. Hindu says, Larry, this is the wrong night for Malinaji to pick a fight with him. Uh, it's called a day of remembrance. 
its uprising by students in Soweto, the infamous town just outside of Johannesburg. He is very politically involved and supports family still in South Africa. He says his dream is to one day personally meet his hero, Nelson Mandela. As you take a look at some of the notable fights in his career, losing to Miguel Cotto some three years ago. His trips to the United States have not been very good. He holds a two and five record on U.S. soil. A closer look at Lovemore Endo. Interesting young man. He, is, he goes to a college in Australia where he has a double major of media and the law. He is a full-time student, has two big tests when he goes back. He also has his own film company and recently had uh, two films on boxing that appeared on Australian television. And he's a big reader. His favorite author, John Grisham, says he's read every one of his books. And Endo would like to write another chapter in his own career tonight and defend his title. Time for the introductions with our ring announcer, Greg Dubin. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Mohegan Sun Arena in beautiful Uncasville, Connecticut, where tonight HBO presents an evening of world-class boxing for your pleasure. Tonight's fights are promoted by DeBella Entertainment and sponsored by LocateStock.com, FreeTheFan.com, TalkSport, Win Prizes, FreeTheFan.com, and the Connecticut Defenders, Connecticut's hometown team. This bout is sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulations, Chairman of the Tribe, Bruce Bosom. The three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point must system, Dan Ackerman, Glenn Feldman, and Alex Levin, and when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Eddie Cotton. And now, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first to my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing black with gold, weighing in a at 138 pounds, his professional record, 22 wins and just one loss. Five wins coming by way of knockout. From Brooklyn, New York, Paulie, the Magic Man, Malinaji. His opponent to my right, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing red with white. Weighing in officially at 138 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, 45 wins, eight losses, and one draw, 30 wins. Coming by way of knockout, hailing from Sydney, Australia, the IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Lovemore, the Black Panther, instructors in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands. Protect yourself at all times. All right, let's touch gloves. Now, here's a test for the fans. Will they be rooting for the aggressor from South Africa and Australia or for the boxer from Brooklyn? I'll say the boxer from Brooklyn. Malinaji has had problems with his right hand. This is his second fight with Buddy McGirt in his corner. He's had three surgeries. He says he's ready to use all of his weapons. Endo says Malinaji wants to run, wants to dance, and Endo said, I'm not a good dancer. He's going to have to deal with my pressure. Malinaji had nine fractures in his right hand in three operations and says he got into bad habits trying to protect the right hand and now is trying to be more of a two-handed fighter. Let's see if he can do it in the heat of action, Lennox. Well, he, you know, he hasn't thrown a right hand yet. He's just been 
He's very left-handed, and that's good. Throwing a, left, a lot of left hands because it's very important to throw as much jabs as possible. Keep your opponent occupied with those jabs before you throw that right hand. Give him something to think about. And that's what Polly's doing right now. Right hand to the ear from Bindo. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Break, break. You know, we started the night with a rebroadcast of the fantastic Miguel Cotto Zab Judah fight from a week ago. Both of these men went the distance with Koto, but Endo sort of discredited Malinaji's turn with it because he said he took the Koto fight on short notice. He didn't have time to prepare. Very effective jab for Malinaji. He sticks it in there and means to sting his opponent. And while he's moving, he's not running. This is what I call effective movement as well. Break, let him go, break! I must say it's a clash of great hairstyles as well. Oh, yes. Or at least contrasting hair. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we asked Malinaji about the hair, and he said uh, the first fight that he'd ever been to, championship fight, was Prince Nassim Hamed, Kevin Kelly at Madison Square Garden. He said the thing he remembered most was Hamed's entrance and Johan Guzman's yellow hair. Malinaji doing a very nice job here. And I would have to pick Malinaji's hair, dude. He takes his hairdo very seriously. And he steps in with the right hand, Lennox. He needs to step in with the right hand. When you got a guy pressuring you like that, you need to stop him with a punch and uh, obviously a power punch. And you know, nobody likes to walk in to a right hand. So it definitely gives him something to think about. Indu. This has been a very nice round for Pauli Malinaji. He's used his jab effectively, effective movement as well as Indu tries to charge at the end of round one. Stay low because he's shooting that right hand counter. So sometimes fail him, okay? Let's go, baby. Very good. This is the second fight that Buddy McGirt has been with Malinazi, and he has been trying to get him to do exactly what he did in that first round, Bob. And Malinazi following the instructions. Let's see if he can remain consistent as we begin round number two for Endo. This is the 331st professional round of his career. He turned pro in 93. Malinaji, 10 years ago at this point, still hadn't been in the ring yet. There's the jab for Malinaji. That's the difference with Malinaji from the last fight is Malinaji sticks that jab, but he remains in punching range like right there. He doesn't just run away. Well, he, he just Three steps right in a row. Yeah, he, ste he just steps out of punching range, and he can step into punching range when he wants to. The difference between him and Darrell, Darrell kind of steps a little further out of punching range because he has that athleticism in him, and he's able to move anywhere he wants to, he, and he uses up the whole ring. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned the 16-foot ring, the mythical 16-foot ring in the first fight. That would hurt runners. Boxers can fight in small rings. I would have to agree with you there. Excellent point. Yeah, good point. Because Malinaji's not using all the space, but he's using it effectively. 
Endo misses with his right hand. Huh? Lennox, what does Endo have to do to sort of put the pressure on Malinaji? No. He is, he's, put, he's put in pressure. What he needs to do is, is not follow Malinaji around. That's what he's doing. He needs to cut off the ring a bit more and try and put Malinaji into a corner. You know, he's happy keeping the fight in the middle of the ring, and, and that may be a mistake because Malinaji looks a lot quicker than him and is more effective with his jab than Indu. And Malinaji is using the right hand just enough to keep and be aware of it. He's winning the fight so far early on with his left, but he shot a few clean rights in there. Well, Indu's not applying the amount of pressure to really make Malinaji throw that right hand. Right now, Malinaji is very comfortable, you know, staying on the outside and throwing that jab and scoring these points. One, two for Malinaji. Slipped the right hand in. So far, everything with Malinaji has started with that effective jab. So far through the first two rounds, Malinaji using the jab effectively. Come forward. You're doing fine, baby. You're doing fine. Everything is beautiful. But listen, the only time you're getting caught, Paulie, is when you're pulling straight up. Okay? Don't get caught pulling straight up. Stay in that shell and keep that head and, mo head and shoulders moving. Okay? Nice deep breath. Okay, now listen, Paul. You gotta start sticking them downstairs every now and then. The jabs is working fine. The right hands are working fine, but you're missing them because you're picking up. You're jabbing and you're picking up. Stay down and shoot the straight right hand. It'll work every time. But when you pick up, you go and you're overshooting your target. Okay, relax. You dictate the pace now. You got them to your beat now. Okay, you got them reaching for you. That's what you want. Okay? Now every now and then when you get close, time that, time that jab. Bring that right uppercut under. Right to the body. Okay, beautiful. Double jab. Larry, it's certainly refreshing in between the rounds. Listening to Buddy McGirt, there's true instruction going on in between the rounds. But, you know, Buddy's saying the right things, you know. Malinaji needs to mix up his punches. He's just throwing, he's throwing the jab. But he's a professional trainer. And too often today we're seeing young fighters come up with the trainers who train them as amateurs or relatives who know something about boxing, but are not professional trainers and are not equipped to bring them to the next level. And, you know, when you say that, you know, some, some trainers, amateur trainers, need to give, give their pupils some wings, allow them to get some other teaching, bring them to a, a professional trainer and, and say, what can you teach my boy? It's Help him point. to get better. It's a good point. It's the old roots and wings. You give them you guys, the roots of knowing about fighting, of making them love fighting, knowing how to train. But then you give them the wings so that they can fly to the best place for them to become as good as they can be. It's the only sport where if you carry a bucket, you can work a corner. Imagine walking onto the San Antonio Spurs bench and saying, hey, I like basketball. Stop right here, stop! Nice jab by Andrew, but... think that uh, an old pro like Endu would be going to the body more. You know, he, he needs to go to the body a bit more because right now what he's doing is not, not being too effective. It's not, it's not effective enough. He's headhunting. It's headhunting and chasing, isn't he? Chasing, as you can see, he's not cutting off the, he's not cutting off the ring whatsoever. Good jab from Alanaji, snaps back the head of Indo. Eddie Cotton admonishing Love More Endo.
First three rounds have been very comfortable for Pauli Malinaji. One thing uh, Malinaji is doing very well is being first. And what I mean by being first, he, he's the first to throw a punch. There he goes. Jab, jab, jab. Always the first to start the action. End of round number three. Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Pauli Malinaji and Lovemore Endo for Endo's 140 pound title. And we are embarking upon round number four in our first fight. Those are the only cheers that we heard. The round card girls. But don't go straight back. Just step around him. He's going for every face. You understand me? So just give him head movement. He's going to go for it. No matter what you do, he's going to go for it. Okay? Because that speed is killing him. Just, re just relax and think speed and combination. Okay? When you get close to him, touch him downstairs. Okay? You're throwing a good hard jab up top. Give me one downstairs every now and then. Okay? Let's go. It's your night, baby. It's your night. your night. Instruction and encouragement from Buddy McGregor. Chant of Pauly as the fans from Brooklyn made the ride up. Let's get a look at our unofficial scorecard with Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob. Three rounds to nothing. 30 to 27. Pauly Malinaji. You know, Bob, he drops that left hand down below the waistband stop, stop, and then he stop, hits stop, stop, it. Stop, stop. I by Malinaji with that up jab. I mean, it's beautiful. He doubles it. Then he throws a hook off of it like he did right there. And he mixes in left jabs and right hands. But I gotta tell you something. Lopor Endo is not a counter puncher. Stop, stop, he doesn't stop, stop. punch when he's got the word Everlast in his face. So as long as Malinaji keeps Hit them with the jab. Lovemore, don't punch. Three to nothing, Malinaji. You're saying that Lovemore right, needs stop, to stop, punch stop. more. Exactly, okay, Larry. Stop. He's got to counter punch a little. When Love he gets hit, he's got to come back. Lovemore's picked up the pace a little bit, and this is what he knows he needs to do. Remember, he's the champion, so he's got something stop, stop, stop. to defend. So he, did, he needs to pick up the pace. When we asked him about fighting on the road, he said, hey, Malinaji was able to drive to the fight. I came from Sydney. I'm not expecting any favors, but I will not hunt for a knockout. He needs to hunt for a little bit more aggression, though, doesn't he? Yeah, he needs to. Good right-handed side by Malinaji. He needs to let his punches go. You know, he's, he's evidently picked up the pace in this round. But he hasn't invested enough to the body, Lennox, to try to slow the boxer up. It's not unusual, once again, for the boxer to dominate the early rounds of a fight. But the puncher or brawler has to be able to hurt him to try to slow him down for the later rounds. Malinaji, yeah, he threw a good right hand. He's throwing some good combination punches right now. So it's a nice left hook to the body underneath the elbow. Good sustained action from Malinaji. Endo trying to respond. To box at this pace, Malinaji definitely needs to be in great shape. And, uh, you know, we're on into the fourth round right now. Come on. Lennox, I'll pose the question to you uh, that Larry brought up. Not Endo not investing enough to the body as he tries a left hook. If a guy's moving in front of you, how did you get and deliver body shots against a guy that wanted to move so much? Well, you know, you have to throw a different array of punches. Obviously, ending most of your combination with body punches. Because this is what, you know, these guys that box don't like. They don't really like the punches to their body. And if you invest in throwing combinations, which, which have body punches... Now, I think just them. getting more and more comfortable and simply beating and due to the punch. Yeah, the quickness is, is definitely apparent in this in this fight. throwing some combination punches and definitely getting in that right hand which is 
Give me straight right here. When you stay down, it's beautiful. Okay. Give me some more uppercuts in there. Okay. Touch them downstairs to the body more. Rinse this one more time, please. Okay? Give me more face. Relax, baby. Find your rhythm. Okay? It's your night. You hear me? Stay focused. Lennox, are you surprised or and even impressed that he is using his right hand so effectively after having broken it so many times and, and learned to fight without it? You know, I'm impressed because most guys that have been through so many operations on their right hand, anytime they throw the right hand and it twinges them a little bit, it, it has a mental effect on them that they don't want to throw it again. But he's elected to throw it, which is a good thing. That means it's not hurting him. Little right uppercut from Malinaji. Endo just tries to pressure, but Malinaji picks him off. He's been consistent with the jab. Shoots a right hand to the ear. Works the jab again to keep Endo away. This is what I call about over using the right hand, which Malinaji does well. You know, he throws jabs, he mixes hooks in there. There's even a couple uppercuts and up jabs. See what Malinaji does, he pushes him to the ropes and he has so much room behind him to escape with any punches. What he needs to do is throw a combination and, and take a couple steps back and then go back in there. I think he's also found that Endu can't hurt him with a punch. He feels too co very comfortable in there because Endu has just stop not stop, stop, gotten his attention with a clean punch. We also answering one of the questions we thought coming in about after the beating he took against Koto, which way he might go, and Stop. he's taking some punishment on the inside, but he seems to be getting stronger off it. Well, you, you I, know, I think, you know, he said he said he's learned something off of the loss, and a lot of boxers, Stop. 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 when they fight a fight and lose, it's either they learn something or they don't, and he definitely learned something, and it gave him more confidence, especially to fight guys that pressure him. Well, and also, to fight on the big occasion, and this is a big occasion for him. Because he seems very relaxed and fighting the way he fights best. He's not letting the event get to him. Seems like there's a slight cut over Malinaj's left eye. I don't know how bad it is. It's not it's not running, but it's definitely cut. Chopping right hand from Endo. There is some blood on the left eyelid of Malinaji. See that? There's that jab hook again. Very effective punch by Malinaji. End of round five. Wednesday night, catch the next installment of Real Sports among the stories. A look at former golfing great Johnny Miller, today known as the most honest, outspoken, and controversial golf analyst on television. Sports of the 20th century returns July 11th with Brooklyn Dodgers, the ghosts of Flatbush. This two-part film looks back at the 10-year period between 1947 when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier and 1957 when the Dodgers left New York for Los Angeles. Give me some more feints this round, okay? Faint him out his shoes this round. Just see what feints he go for, okay? And give me the double jab. Stay down, straight right hand. Do me a favor, please, once. Try time that up jab and come with that right uppercut, okay? Beautiful, baby. Let's go, Paulie. Stay focused now. Malinaji has a cut on the left eyelid. Danny Milano is his cut man as we begin round six. Malinaji cut and had the fractured cheekbone against Koto, so he's dealt with that type of adversity. Stop, stop! Thank you. Stop hitting his back, too. The heads came together again as 
Endo throws a right hand. Is there any sense that Endo getting a little bit stronger here? Well, the, the guy that's coming forward does less work than the guy going backwards. And, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to tell further on down the line, but uh, Malinaji does look a bit tired. You know, that left hand is down a bit and needs to come up stop a right bit. There, stop right there, stop right there. But this is what happens when you throw it so much and he's been throwing it all up. Hey, Cotton taking a point away. Yeah, Harold, Harold, did you see that? Larry, that's a good point away for rabbit punching. In other words, Endo was hitting Pauli Malinacci on the spinal column behind the head. That's a rabbit punch. No, stop, I stop, didn't see the rabbit punch. I mean, you got to warn a guy at least once or twice for rabbit punching before taking a point away. No, so I, I thought it was a little bit quick. He did uh, warn him two rounds ago. Well, that was for punching in the back, but not for rabbit punching because you definitely need to warn a guy for rabbit punching. Not, I didn't see the punch either. I, so that's a very stop, questionable stop, stop, call by the referee. Right, I, I agree with Lennox. Yes. Absolutely okay. questionable. I, I agree. So we're unanimous here. Malinaji doubles up his left hand. It, it does appear that Endo is trying to come on more. And with that said, Malinaji puts together a combination. Yeah, good combination yes. punching. This, this is what you need to do. And that kind of, of combination rally can win you around. Yep. Impress the judges and the fans. The fans love it. It shows good, good skill boxing by Malanji. And remember, Endo has a point deducted in this round as well. He could be so far behind at the end of this round that he'll need at least one two-point round to get back into the fight. The end of the sixth will signify the midway point of this bout. Go. The box is beautiful. Okay, take a nice deep breath. Sit back and relax. Sit back and relax. Listen, just keep doing what you're doing. But listen, when he's countering the jab, this is what you do. Feign the jab. Let him shoot the right hand. You roll and you come back with something. Okay? Don't always jab all the time because he's timing it. So sometimes after you shoot a couple, give him a feint. He's going he's gonna to try to shoot the right hand over it. Okay? Nice deep breath. Nice deep breath. Let out slow. Okay, now listen here. You got to touch him downstairs with that jab a little more. Slow him up some. All right? Okay, he's trying to stop the man. And here we look at the so-called rabbit punch. And I, you know what? He, he, I wouldn't have taken a point away from that. That's a terrible call. It's not like he wound up and hit him on purpose. That was more of a slap in the back of the, of the head. He should have warned him for slapping, not for punching him as a rabbit punch. Uh, well, Andrew came here saying he thought he would have to beat Malinaji up to win the fight and Malinaji's turf. Harold, how do you have it scored through six? Okay, Bob, six to nothing, 60 to 53, Paulie Malinaji. You gotta give him an extra point to round six because Eddie Cotton took away a point. That's that, you throw Paulie Malinaji into a seven point lead in this fight at, at the midpoint. I mean, it's a tremendous early lead. Malinaji, in my opinion, hasn't come close to losing a round. In round six, he threw in six, seven, eight punch combinations to what he's been doing in the previous five rounds. Six to nothing, Malinaji. Desperation from Endo turning south. Paul Lennox? Well, he's trying to do something different, giving Malinaji a different look, seeing how effective he is going southpaw. And uh, you can only tell by, you know, the amount of punches Malinaji is going to get hit by. And, uh, you know, one thing that Malinaji does well is take that step back. He steps just out of Indu's range. And I think that's very effective by Malinaji. Yeah, it's, it's, it's virtually an intuitive kind of move he has. It's something you, that's very hard to teach. 
that he has that sense of range in which he can step back and just be, make Endu have to stand Endu, over. Endu's doing something that nobody, not even the ref can see. He's stepping on Malinaj's front, front foot. And, and this is where, you, where an old pro does these type of things. He's using different things that he's learned over the past years and seeing if they would work for the hell. Well, it's happened several times, so we're supposing that it's on, it's deliberate. Yo, it's definitely on purpose, but it's the, the you know, Malinaj is not being affected by it. He may get affected by it, you know, all of a sudden he's trying to get out of the way of a punch and uh, Indu's on his foot. You mentioned Malinaji is strained from his father for... There he is, stepping on that foot again. Look at that. Look at that. There you go, step on that again. foot. Ref is not seeing anything. We told Malinaji's father, who made the trip from Sicily, has left the arena. He can't stand to watch his son fight. He says his mom has never been to a fight either, Carmela Iacopelli. Imagine if he was losing the fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got to be emotional for him. You know, his son's in there. Out there, the feet get tangled up again. Ah, uh, you know. Lennox, can you consciously try to step on the guy's foot? Oh, yeah, definitely. There's no doubt. I mean, you know, you, you do it until the referee says stop it. Uh, do it Good again. Hand from do it again. We're through seven. It seems like about 18 for Endo. <laughs> Don't go crazy. When he stays, when he turns side four, keep touching his right glove. Don't throw that uppercut from the outside. Okay. That's a dangerous shot against the south four. Okay? Just keep your head moving and use your jab. Okay? Touch his right glove, all right? Hit his right glove with your left glove. Okay, baby? You in control. Okay? <laughs> How we feeling, baby? Take a nice deep breath. Okay, now you're just getting started. He's trying to find your rhythm. Okay? And this is a situation right now. You can see Endo purposely trying to get that foot, stepping on his foot, then throwing some punches, trying to stop Malinaji from moving away. Mental thing. Just get out there, dominate this round, show him he's the champ, okay? Just to show him nothing. You know, he was... A very good soccer player in South Africa, he tells us, so he has educated feet. <laughs> Lunging left hand from Endo. And Malinaji, his father was a professional soccer player. So that's where maybe his athleticism comes from. Malinaji's been consistent with his jab. According to CompuBox, he's throwing about 42 jabs around. The junior welterweight average, according to CompuBox, about 20 jabs thrown per round. But what he's doing so well is, is the distance, Lennox, right? Yeah. He doesn't give... He, he doesn't give Endo a chance to set himself very often. No, he's punching at the end of his punches and is using his reach and, it, and his size very well. The movement is very important because he's, he's making sure that he's not in Endo's way. He's making him, he's punching in his way. All right, we know what Malinaji is doing and what he can do. How does... And don't rock the boat and change things around. Well, he's trying to. He's, he's trying to move in as quick as possible. He's, shake, he's shaking his body. He's, he's, he's trying. What Marlon Lodge is doing is, is too quick right now, and, and he's too effective with that left jab of his. You know, he's controlling, he's controlling all the action in the ring with that left jab. Well, Marlon Lodge can't punch a lick, really. You know, it's float like a butterfly, sting like a butterfly. But he's using what he has in a, a beautifully controlled way. Well, this is his 161st round as a pro, and he's got five knockouts to support your reasoning. Lance, can you improve the power, or is it just God given? Well, you know, uh, yes, you, I believe you can prove you can improve the power. You know, a lot of people say you're born with power, but it's all in the motion of your body. Your body helps the power. So if you're, the whole, your whole body's moving forward while you're punching, that's going to make you punch 
a little better and a little stronger and give you more power. There's that stepping on that foot again. Good jab again from Malinaji. Snap back ahead of Endo. Controlling, love more, Endo. Here through the first eight rounds of this scheduled 12 rounder, Endo's 140 pound belt on the line. Right, right now, Ten. to eight rounds. He's the ex champion. He's got to win his belt back in the rest of this fight. Let me see. Saturday, July 14th, the 140 pound triple header Antonio Margarito faces Paul Williams in Los Angeles. And Arturo Gatti takes on Alfonso Gomez. And hard hitting Kermit Cintron faces Walter Matisse in Atlantic City. Immediately following live coverage of boxing, stay tuned for the premiere of Countdown to Hopkins Wright. Our behind the scenes look at both fighters as they prepare for their July 21st battle live on HBO Pay Per View. Okay. Hey, listen. Let's keep our mind on the task at hand here, okay? Let's not play to the crowd. Okay, baby? Double jabs, straight right hands. Don't pick up. Keep it sharp and stay. He's more tired than you. Well, Alex, you mentioned in our open for this main event that uh, Endo won the title with a phone call in the middle of the night, and there's something missing when you don't hear. And the new. He's going to hear the new, but it's going to be Pauli Malinaji if he doesn't change things. Well, you know, there's still a few rounds left in the fight, and, you know, Malinaji needs to stay focused if he's going to win this fight. Anything can still happen. It only takes one punch to change the, the root of this whole fight. Lennox Lewis, Larry Merchant from the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. Pauli Malinaji and Lovemore Endo for the 140-pound title, currently held by Endo. Malinaji has controlled this fight with his jab and combinations. Endo had a point deducted in round six for a rabbit punch. Earlier tonight, Andre Durrell, a unanimous decision win against Curtis Stevens. and got dropped by a sharp right hand. And it, and it was, you, you know, in this situation, it wasn't the power that dropped him, it was the speed. Yep. He was a little off balance as he came in and he got dropped by a quick right hand. And he, he never seen the punch coming. He's one of those punching that was just like a flash knockdown. That time he did sting like a bee. <laughs> Sat in the pocket, and he dealt. And a chance of Pauly. Fans from Brooklyn have made the three-hour drive to the Mohegan Sun. And last week, I asked you about, can a guy manufacture power with speed? He did. Yeah, well, you know, what equals power is speed and weight equals power. Yeah. But what he does so well is he didn't get flustered when he was being run down, being chased. He stayed cool and he just let his hands go and hit him right on the chin. And it was a, a kind of a flash knockdown. But it's a 10 8 round if nothing else happens. Yes, it is. See, this is Malinaji pushing him against the ropes. He's got all that room behind him. Hey! Another good round for Pauli Malinaji. Malinaji feeling really good in there. And looking good as well. He's going to be desperate. Got in these three rounds, OK? You're going to win these three rounds decisively, like me, OK? Three to go. When you promise me, you get all you got, OK? 
We have to win all these rounds, champ. We have to win these rounds. Every your body you've got to give me for these next three rounds, OK? I don't want you backing up. When you hurt, when you go forward, when you go forward the whole time, don't let him rest, OK? Work, 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 OK? Three to go, you've got to do it. You want to keep this belt? Yeah. That's what you've got to yeah, do. Yeah, let's take a look at this flash knockdown. Oh, it was a quick, see? It was a quick right hand. Indu didn't even see it coming. What Polly did, just he just released it. Boom, right on the chin. Didn't see it, put him down on his bum. Here we get round number 10. Harold Letterman has your scorecard read. Okay, Bob, 19 to 79, okay. nine rounds to nothing. Polly Malinacci. You know, Bob, I can throw in something interesting here. Polly Malinacci, we realized from the very beginning, had nice snap in his shots. Stop, 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 now, we know stop, he's not a puncher, okay. but the truth now of the matter is, yeah, yeah. you got to wonder how many times Love Morindo can get hit in the head before he does go off his feet. And in round nine, that's exactly what happened. A 10-8 round for Malinacci in the ninth. He's up 11 points, 11 and a half points, nine to nothing, Malinacci. Malinaji is throwing 41 jabs per round. That's set up his power punches. He's landed 48% of his power shots, according to CompuBox, all set up by that good jab. I agree. Indu's going to get a little desperate here. He needs to get desperate because he, he can feel this fight slipping away from him. I'm, I'm sure his corner has told him. Time Indu's trying to get in, Malinaji hit his, hits him with a punch and then turns, and Indu has to readjust. He has to turn around and try and find him. Malinaji blocked most of that with his glove. Endo continues to just follow him around the ring. Larry, I asked the question before the main event about Malinaji getting thumped in his last title shot. How does he get a second shot without beating a ranked fighter? Have we answered a bit of that question here so far? Well, he's answered it, but, uh, but we have to go deeper into the question and the answer because of how many titles there are out there and who happens to own them. It's uh, symbolic in a way that, that Endu got his title at 3 o'clock in the morning somewhere instead of the ring because that's how some of these inept and uh, corrupt sanctioning bodies function. But he's doing what he has to do, and he's making a very, very good impression while doing it. There is, there is boxing that can be entertaining. <laughs> I'm glad that you you agree with that, Larry. Ten, Ten down, two to go for Malinaji. Ben Indo. Alright, let's not play to the crowd. Okay, let's get back to what we were doing. Okay, you can party all night tonight, but right now you got a title to get. Okay? The hell with the show bowling. Okay? This man's still the champ. You got to get his title. You don't got time to be playing around. Okay? Keep that right hand up. He's going to be throwing scud missiles at you, man. Okay? You got to stay low and you got to be sharp. You hear me? You been doing fine. Let's not fast. Stop messing up now. Okay? Drink this. Let's go, baby. Two to go, okay? You got this in here. You don't train too hard to let this go like this, okay? Nice and tight, stay on him. Breathe no in, breathe in, breathe in. Two seconds out. Your buddy McGurk told Malinaji something which is very good, and you know that the fight's not won yet. Stay focused in there. Don't need to play around. Don't take no extra chances. He's got the fight won, basically. And, uh, stop, 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 you know, you don't want to take no risks in there. Let's watch your heads, both of you. This is the seventh time for Endo passed the tenth. Second time for Malinaji. Yeah. 
There's Malinazzi with that jab again. Good stiff jab there from Endo, but he continues to chase and not cut off the ring. coming at you like this, this is when you stop and plant your right foot and throw that right hand and you gain a lot of power in that punch because the guy's coming on to it. That's how he scored the knockdown. Yeah. Well, let's take it from the other side here with Lovemore Endo. Uh, his belt is, you know, a round and a half away from going away. I mean, what, what should he be doing? He's doing what he what he can do, you know. Uh, it, the only thing I would suggest is like try and get Malinaji into a fight and start throwing a lot more wilder punches. He was very effective when he was throwing that wild hook. He needs to throw some more wild hooks. Shot a right hand to the chin that got Malinaji's attention. See, Lovemore, Lovemore wants to get close to you before he throws punches, and I think that's that's ineffective. He needs to throw it from a distance and in close. Okay. See, that type, that type of movement, Lovemore can't really control it. I don't know. I, did you, did you, I didn't see any hit behind the head. No. Well, he's your favorite referee, isn't he? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> For those with shorter memories, uh, Eddie Cotton refereed Lennox's fight against Mike Tyson and there you go. made it seem like he was fighting the referee and Mike Tyson. <laughs> and he beat them both. <laughs> sure did, Lennox. Yeah. Brings back fond memories, huh? Yeah, it does. Stop, 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 stop. Come on. Stop, stop, stop. Come on. I, you know, I'm, I'm confused why the referee stops them all the time. I mean... Should allow them to do a little infighting. Beautiful job by Malinaji. Turn, turn. I guess Eddie's always confused you though, right? Turn in now. We're gonna stop this kid in this spot, okay? You gotta stay low. Do you hear me? Okay. Listen to me. Three minutes, you're on top of the world, baby. You hear me? Okay. Right. First bell, okay? I know you can do it, okay? Let's go, Lord. and final go. round for Paulie Malinaji and Lovemore Endo. Stop, 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 stop. With Endo's 140-pound title on the line. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Good job, thank you. According to our observations, Endo needs a knockout. And it looks as though he knows it. Good oh. jabs by Malinaji. No. Indu has no answer for the jab. He's just basically running in, trying stop, 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 to stop, stop, get stop, stop, desperate, stop, stop. but he's running into the jab. Stop. He's running into Malinaji's jab, which is crisp and sharp. Blood is starting to leak from the left eye of Malinaji again. Doesn't appear to be bothering his vision. Cut man Danny Milano has done a good job with that. That occurred earlier in the fight. Stop, stop, stop. Come on.
Right hand from Endo off the Malinaji. Stop, stop right there, right there. Put them hands. Step back. Thanks. Is this where the slippery slope is if you're in the ring and fans watching at home? We see we feel Malinaji is comfortably in front. We don't know what the judges' scorecards are. I'm sure, most fans at home are saying, why doesn't he just pretty much run here? Well, you know, he is running to a certain degree. He's trying to stay away from the onslaught of Hindu trying to come come onto him and trying to get that knockout because he's desperate now. He has to try and get a knockout to try and win this fight because. I believe that Malinaji has outscored him for the most of the fight, and uh, he's got this fight in the bag. Sometimes the safest place is being close. Outstanding performance by Pauli Malinaji. And the Brooklynites serenade him here at the Mohegan Sun. The crowd has really spurred him on here, and, you know, Malinaj is feeling it. He knows he's a champion, he's acting like a champion, he's finishing this fight like a champion, too. This is what you call closing the show. Very important for, for, for a fighter to close the show. Giving his fans what, what they want. Great fight by Pali Malinaj. Malinaj, good fight. Ecstatic, his corner's ecstatic, he's ecstatic. Very happy man. It's ecstasy. <laughs> Even his promoter's in there. Lou, Lou DiBella, he's very happy. Unbelievable performance by Pauli Marginaldi. Malinaji landed 35 of 76 to close the show. Just a tick under 50%. See Harold Letterman's scorecard, two-point round in the sixth when Endo lost a point for a rabbit punch, and he got dropped in round number nine. Buddy. Thank you. Good job, good job. Like, well, we'll go to the judges' scorecards. We have Malinaji comfortably in front, but let's take a look at the judges scoring this fight. Don Ackerman. Scored for Tony in that fight against Ruiz, 116-111. Len Feldman had Miguel Cotto winning a decision against Malinaji. And that went with the other two judges on the card. And Alex Levin scored the fight for Julio Diaz. Had it for Diaz by one point before Diaz got the stoppage. Lovemore Endo could never solve the mystery, figure out how to cut the ring off effectively and land his power shots. Malinaji used effective in the movement. He didn't run, he fought, but he used his movement to his advantage, Alex. So Pauli Malinaji looking for his 23rd win. Bid for Endo's 140-pound title. What a brilliant fight. With trainer Buddy McGirt, who did a nice job during the course of the fight of working him through it. And for Lovemore Endo, he awaits to find out his fate. I was surprised that it's taking so long to get the judges' scorecards tallied. You saw Harold Letterman's scorecard. The unofficial scorecard had it easily for Malinaji. I had him winning every round on my card. But you never know. Paulie Malinaji from Bensonhurst in Brooklyn. Started boxing 10 years ago. He was on the fast track to nowhere. Got kicked out of high school. Was fighting with his stepfather, got sent to live with his grandparents. His grandfather said, hey, you okay. got to get to high school? Come well, work with me in construction for $10 a day. No, my, okay, my mic's working. And he took him to Gleason's gym. He said, I felt comfortable in the gym from the moment I got there. 
said nobody was going to outwork me. Once he was in the gym, he said, without boxing, I would have been nothing. Let me tell you, Malinaji was in terrific shape. And you need to be in terrific shape if you're a boxer that moves. So he understands that. He, he looked very comfortable in there. And he threw some great punches. Excellent work with the jab. Excellent combination working when he needed to. And he, Indo, Indo had no answer for him. Time for the judges' scorecards with our ring announcer, Greg Dubin. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judges Don Ackerman and Alex Levin both have it 120 to 106. And Glenn Feldman has it 118 to 108. For the new IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Paulie the Magic Man, Malinaji. Paulie Malinaji takes a look at that championship belt. It is his with an impressive decision against Lovemore Endo as we take a look at the final CompuBox numbers. Total punches in the fight, Malinaji throwing 136 more punches. He landed at 44%. Why? Because he was effective with the jab. The junior welterweight average of jabs thrown per round, 40, 20 per round. He averaged over 40 per round. And he landed at 40% of his jabs. He was able to control Endo in this fight with the jab. And a very impressive performance by Pauly Malinaji out of Brooklyn, New York. Larry Merchant's in the ring with the new champ. Thank you very much, Bob. Congratulations, Pauly. In your wildest imagination, did you think it would be this easy or as easy as it looked? Yeah, you know, it was. It looked easier than it was, Larry. Uh, he made me work the whole 12 rounds. Although I was winning every round, I thought um, I had to work every single round. He wouldn't cut me no breaks. Um, I still didn't think I would win by as wide a margin on scorecards. I thought he would take a few more rounds from me, but I would win in the end. I'm just glad I was able to win it and win cleanly. But he made me work. Even the rounds that looked easy, they weren't so easy. It was apparent from the beginning that you could beat him to the punch anytime you wanted to. Did that tell you right away that you had this fight in your grasp? Well, not really, Larry, because I felt I was going to beat him to the punch anyway. Uh, the main concern fighting Love More to do was be, would be to, to not make him carry the fight too fast and wear me out late. And I knew I was going to beat him to the punch. I knew probably the early rounds he was going to come out strong, but I was going to be able to nullify him with my speed. But uh, the question for me was I had to be in shape to nullify his, his late round attack because he always comes on strong late. And I luckily I was able to do that. It's no secret that you're not the, the biggest puncher to ever come out of Brooklyn, but you did get a knockdown. Let's take a look at it and tell us how it happened, and were you surprised by it? Um, yeah, I was a little surprised. Lovemore's got a great chin, but speed kills. See, I caught him coming in there, so um, I, I got the double impact. He came in, and he met my right hand, so I guess a double impact, even the lightest puncher with double impact will get a knockdown. <laughs> Plus, he didn't see it. <laughs> You were very conscious coming into this fight of what it would say about you a year after getting beaten up by Cotto. Do you think you showed yourself as well as others that you were able to survive that beating? Yeah, you know, uh, physically, I think anytime anybody gets in there with me, El Cotto, you're going to take a physical beating. Um, I think still, if I can be given another chance later with a little more maturity, I think I may be able to beat him. And I may still get beat up in the process, but I can come out with more rounds. You know, I think either way, when you find Miguel Cotto, you're going to get beat up. It's a matter of can you pull it out at the end anyway when winning more rounds. Um, I was glad that um, I was able to show everybody that I wasn't finished after the Cotto fight like he finished a lot of other opponents. A lot of guys get in the ring with, with Cotto and they're never the same again. I was determined to show everybody that it, I, it wasn't the case with me. Yeah, give us a your brief wish list for future opponents. I want Ricky Hatton. Um, Ricky Hatton, they say he's the best. I got me a world title, uh, but they say Ricky Hatton's still the best. He not, he vacated this title to not fight a, a, a true fighter like Lovemore. I think Castillo has seen his best days, and I think at this point in time, Lovemore was a better fighter than Castillo, and I think I wound up with a tougher fight, and I hadn't got the easy way out. I'm not saying it's such an easy way out, because Castillo still has something left, but I still think Lovemore has more left at this point than Castillo. I think Hatton chose the easier way out, and uh, after he gets done with Castillo, I would like to fight him. Thanks and congratulations again. Bob? All 
right, Larry. Well, an impressive effort by Paulie Malinaji here tonight. Uh, Lennox, your impressions of the way he was able to use the right hand, which had been injured with the three surgeries, and the dominant jab that he used in this fight. Well, that was the key, the dominant jab. The way how he used the jab set up the right hand. And very impressive movement, very impressive jab, good speed, good movement. And he, he came out as a champion. He looked like a champion. And the fact that he's a champion now is, is great. It's, it's going to do so much for him, and I'm, I'm happy for him as well. Well, Pauli Malinaji separates that championship, and uh, Malinaji uh, being hoisted on the shoulders of his people and uh, able to come up with the victory in very decisive fashion. And just a great moment for Malinaji as he steps up and he's able to come away with the championship. Larry Merchant, he had a chance to talk with Pauli. Your impressions of what he did here tonight and where he fits in the 140 pound landscape. Well, sometimes you feel uh, that some of these titles uh, to the general public are about as valuable as a, a box of chocolates. <laughs> but to the fighter himself, obviously it gives him recognition and opportunities to make bigger fights and a lot bigger money, which is the idea of professional uh, uh, prize fighting. He, see, he had an opportunity, he seized it, and all credit to him. Uh, coming into this fight, I thought he was a, a better candidate to be the uh, Mario Lopez of Dancing with the Stars, Mario Lopez being a big boxing <laughs> fan as well. But I think that he showed he can uh, fight with the Stars also. Malinaji used his nifty footwork and his good jab to control the former champion, Lovemore Endo. Larry, pleasure working with you. It was great fun, Bob. And Lennox, thank you as well. So Pauli Malinaji comes into the ring tonight with a lot of Brooklyn faithful behind him and a decisive victory against Lovemore Endo tonight. He is the new 140-pound champion taking Endo's belt away. Well, we hope you enjoyed this edition of HBO's